this is going to be an e-bike mountain bike adventure. <laughs> or at least I hope that's what it's going to be. It has all the potential to turn into quite an epic. This might not be a good route for an e-bike. <laughs> because I'm heading off into the wilds of the Scottish Highlands. On and off-road adventure cycling is at the heart of this channel. We offer tips and reviews, always honest and clear. We have a popular series for beginners called Stuff Cyclists Don't Tell You. And specialist expertise from leading triathlete Sean McFarlane. You can find out more at our website. Please subscribe. This easy bit at the start is known locally as the high road and branching off from here is what's called the coffin road and it is considerably steeper because it goes out of this glen over a Bialacha pass and down into another. It's also a route that used to be taken by miners going over to the Corrantee mines but the coffin road I'm hoping that's not prophetic. I've ridden a couple of e-bikes. You'll find this video where we took an electric fat bike up a Northumberland hill. This time I've borrowed one for a local route. This is what it looks like on the map. It's an historic right of way. It's marked on maps going back to 1835 linking communities in different glens. Loch Sunart on one side and the inland communities around Loch Shiel on the other. I'm going to guess that You've been thinking, that's not very steep, what's he been talking about? Well, that's because until now we've been on something of a road. It might not have looked like it, but it is. And that's because of that. The dam was put in years ago by Scottish Water and used to provide all our water in the village. It's now the Community Hydroelectric Scheme. And that road I've been riding was put in, or rather improved, for access, but now, now things really do get steep. Well, I'm certainly getting an excellent workout. Here's the thing, when I'm riding, it's absolutely fantastic, and I am managing to tackle sections that I wouldn't be able to ride on my my regular bike, it's like a, a big hand is pushing on my back and just getting me over the difficult bits. However, when the ground is either loose or soft or squishy, to the extent that the back wheel is going to spin out regardless, well then in that case, 24 kilos of bike is a heck of a lot to push and this bit of it is proving quite exhausting. The bike came from Offbeat Bikes in Fort William. It's a Cube Reaction Hybrid Pro with the larger 625 watt battery. My friend Nick's explaining how to control it. So you've got Eco, Tour, E-Mountain Bike, and then Turbo. Right. So I would recommend that you set off in Eco just to start with, just to get the feel of how the actual electric yeah. kicks in. The battery dropped just one of five bars on my ride, which was amazing because I was on the highest turbo setting for most of this climb. Let's just quickly talk about the bike. A key thing of this cube is that it is powered by a Bosch motor. Bosch pretty much dominate the market and with good reason because they guarantee that even when the motor is no longer being produced and these things update every year, then they will supply spares for up to seven years, I believe. And that's a big thing because this is a long-term investment. The other thing I would say is I would always buy something like this from my local bike shop because 
It's not like a bike you can service yourself. That motor is really going to need plugging into a professional computer to work out if there's anything wrong with it and to do any gradual maintenance with the thing. Incidentally, if you do try and tweak it and uh, take off any of the governors which limit the speed, then when it is plugged into a Bosch computer, it automatically resets the maximum speed to five mile an hour, saying, hey, there's something wrong with this, it needs to be fixed. And if you do it three times, then it automatically switches off the engine and it has to go back to Bosch to be fixed. This might not be a good route for an e-bike. <laughs> you think. <sighs> so this is what remains of the old Corinti lead mine. Uh, and the, the track is gonna flatten out a little bit now. Uh, and the people who would have used this as a coffin road would be rather glad of that. You can imagine six strapping blokes carrying the coffin from the villages of Strontian over that pass and down to, I suppose it's access to Loch Shiel uh, because there's a burial island on Loch Shiel and that's where they would have been heading. And this is where an e-mountain bike really shines, just rattling along forest tracks like this. You need the toughness of a mountain bike, you need the grip of those big tires, but you're covering the ground at quite a pace, largely thanks to that battery and motor. You know, I think I probably did this ride the wrong way around. It seems unfair to have tested that e-bike on the gnarliest, loosest, boggiest climb imaginable because this seems to be more its terrain. So I'm gonna go down here, turn around and then come back up because I think it'll perform better. Well, yes, you can see this bike is much happier on this sort of terrain. Oh, I think I've done this trip the wrong way around. I owe the e-bike an apology. So can you have an adventure on an e-bike? Well, if that experience is anything to go by, the answer is most certainly yes, but it's not like a traditional ride. If I'd realized what I know now about this e-bike, I would have ridden this the other way around. And there are one or two other things as well. I suppose the main thing I've realized today is that this is not just a mountain bike with a motor. This is its own sort of bike, its own sort of fun. And you have to learn how and where to ride it, just as you would a full suspension mountain bike or, or a gravel bike in particular. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend you rushed out and bought one of these. Definitely rent one, get a feel for it first and accept it is gonna take a little bit of time to work out how and where you're gonna ride it. But in terms of that, uh, that famous equation, N plus one, in this case, might equal E. What do you think of your e-mountain bike? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, bye.